Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I dev stuff. Welcome to episode 29 of Action RPG Game in Unity. This will be another episode de dedicated to fixing issues. So let's begin by fixing the animation issue. You see if I move character closer to the enemy and try to attack him, my character will not rotate to face the enemy. Open the attack handler. And let's find where we are processing the attack command. Let's clean this code a little. Let's extract the attack timer reset into the new method. Create new method called face target. Pass command as a parameter. Actually, let's pass the target transform as a parameter because we might be facing any kind of target. So it's better to just to pass the object we are going to face an attack. Inside calculate vector towards the target. Then convert it into the quaternion. And apply the newly calculated rotation to our character. This will make our character to rotate towards the target we are attacking. Let's remove the y-axis out of the rotation vector. This way we remove an ability to look up and down for our character. Which isn't necessary for our type of the game. Good. Now let's solve another problem. If I double click the enemy, my character will execute an attack then wait for the attack timer to run out and execute the second attack. This is happening because after first click we make our character execute the attack. Meanwhile, while the attack is being animated, it sets the character ability to attack on the timeout. If we give a command to attack while this timeout is active, we will put this command into memory until character can play this attack again. To fix this, we should not allow our character to cache the command of the attack if the attack command is not available. Let's extract a check of attack availability into the new method. If timer is more than zero, return false, meaning attack is not available. Otherwise, return true. So if our check attack is false, it means our process command cannot execute the attack. In player character input, when you process an input, we have a process which check can we attack the selected target. And we want to add additional check if our character can perform the attack. Let's test this. Good. Now 
Ok, now let's fix yet another issue. Look at this. If I attack and then immediately move my character, she slides while animating the attack. Want to fix the character in place while she plays an attack animation. So we need to tell to the character when we should not be able to move. Because he is busy doing something which fix him in the place. To do this, let's create another new component called can move state. This component will contain the collection of states which determine the ability of character to move around. For example, is he attacking? If he is attacking, he cannot move. Let's add it as the required component for the character movement. Inside can move state, we will add new public variable called is attacking. And let's create a new method called check. Inside return if we are not attacking, it means we can move. So if it is attacking equals false, we can move. Warning, look at this. Because I added the required component to my player character, it automatically added second can move state. So remove the can move state marked with blue outline. If you got the same issue as I did. Now open attack handler. Catch the reference to the can move state. Now we want to time out the process when the character is animated, when he or she is attacking. So create two new variables, attack animation time and animation timer. Set the timer for the animations. This timer is for fixing our character in place for animation. So create animation timer tick method. Inside set up the timer. Then create update can move state. Where you will set the is attacking based on the timer. If timer is more than zero, it means we are playing the attack animation. And when we attack the enemy, set the animation timer to the value of how long our animation will take. For this we have created variable attack animation time. You will be able to change this variable to manipulate how uh, long is your animation. And we can use and change this value based on the weapon you are using, for example. So if you have a longer animations for, for example, like a two-handed weapons, you will want to set this value higher. And for uh, faster animations, for example, with like a dagger or something like this, you will set this value lower. So the higher the, this value, the longer your uh, character will be fixed in place to play the animation.
If you set it too low, he will start sliding once again, like we had it before. So now, if I attack the enemy, in the can move state, you will be able to see that you are attacking. Now inside character movement, we want to use can move state to determine, can we move the character around? Cache the reference to the can move state component. And in set destination, call check. If it returns true, it means our character can move and we can move our character. Let's test this. Good. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. You will get cool perks like being featured like those cool people you can see right now on your screen or access to project files on Patreon. Let's restore health bar functionality. Open the interact input. We have an update HP bar method. We need to get and pass the life pool from the damageable object we have selected. So add get life pool method to the itemageable interface. I think it's pretty self-descriptive. It will return the life pool of the damageable object. Implement the newly added method to the damageable character. And in the destructible object, we don't have any life pool. So simply return null. Let's go back to the update HP bar method and let's open HP bar show method. Inside, if we select character, it will have a life pool, which we will show on our HP bar. While if we are selecting a destructible object, it will not have any kind of life pool on it. So it will return null. So we don't need to show the HP bar for destructible object. If life pool is not null, Show and update the HP bar. Let's test this. Good. Good, this is it for this episode. Special thank you to Stray Chelzo for his generous support. With best regards, see you in the next episode.